folks, welcome back to the Steampunk Test Proto Channel. This is the place where sci-fi and fantasy merge with history to produce that most wonderful genre of fiction, steampunk. Today, in honor of America's Independence Day, I'm going to talk about history and kind of leave the sci-fi aside. But before we get started, uh, my book, Fideo's Automata, available on Amazon. I've got a link on my YouTube page on my YouTube desktop. I've got to find a better way to make this more obvious to my Amazon page, but uh, please check it out. It's got paper and ebook version, and it deals with a very fascinating episode in American history, the Colorado Labor Wars, and it fictionalizes it in the sense that Nikola Tesla, who also lived in Colorado around this time, gets involved. So, on with the show. Now, why is history important? I've, I've talked about history a lot, of time, a lot, but I don't know if I've ever gone into this this much. As Spanish philosopher George Santayana once wrote, those who cannot remember the past are condemned to repeat it. And so that's very important. I mean, this, these words are inscribed in the memorial at Auschwitz, for example. But besides uh, trying to keep horrible things from happening again, we also want to prevent uh, would-be dictators and ideologues from, from uh, conquering us, from taking away our freedoms by obscuring our history, by misleading us, by making us misunderstand and uh, being ashamed of our past and our country. Uh, things like that happened in the French Revolution uh, during terror when they tried to rewrite everything, restart the calendar, uh, change the, the, make a 10 day week and everything, you know, do away with the old religion, create a new one. Same thing happened in the Chinese Cultural Revolution when they tried to erase 5,000 amazing years of, of Chinese history, all this wisdom and knowledge, trying to do away with it just because Chairman Mao was hungry for power and all, a lot of good innocent people got murdered or basically tortured or put into slave labor camps because of this horrific event. Now, one of the things that inspired me to get more into the American Revolution was watching the 2015 historical musical Hamilton by Lin-Manuel Miranda. And uh, it was based on the uh, award-winning uh, biography, Ham Alexander Hamilton, by Ron Chernow. And it really got me more interested in this period. I was thinking I had read more about the American Revolution. I just turned out I just had three books to offer for this for this video, but I think they're good books, and I will I will go over them. The first is a uh, 1943 YA young adult book by Esther Forbes called Giant Tremaine, and it's the story of a 14 year old silversmith apprentice called Giant Tremaine and his uh, adventures and personal struggles from around 1775 to 77 or so. He meets a lot of very famous historical characters such as our favorite brewer Sam Adams, uh, John Hancock, Paul Revere, and so on of the famous Midnight Ride. And uh, you know he witnesses the Tea Party, uh, the Battles of Lexington Con and Concord also has, has to do with the Midnight Ride, the British blockade of uh, Boston Harbor and so forth. Uh, Tremaine himself, he's, he's an orphan, and he's an uh, apprentice to this silversmith, and he's, he's a brilliant boy, but he's kind of arrogant because he's so smart and he's not patient with other people, and his arrogance is part of what leads to his injury of his hand that puts his future as a silversmith in doubt. So it, there's a lot of personal struggle, struggle and growth involved in too, and I highly recommend it. It's a very well-written a very interesting, good book for young people, and there's nothing really, you know, there's nothing really that controversial in it. It's not dumbed down, and I'm glad that it's still available. Second book is a self-published book, and we self-published authors have to stick together, so I love to promote these things. Uh, Hailstorm by Becky Akers, 2012, and this is um, concerning uh, none other than Nathan Hale, the American spy who was caught by the British and sentenced to hang at age 21. And his famous quote is, I regret that I have but one life to give for my country. A very inspiring. And it's an interesting book. I think it was real research. He talks a lot about his, his uh, youth, uh, his childhood, 
He, his father was a minister. Uh, he was widowed and remarried, a widow. <laughs> and he came from Coventry, Connecticut, and uh, he was sent to Yale because, well, he was pretty, pretty smart with his older brother Ephraim. And the, kind of the pranks they pulled, which were kind of pretty funny. And he met Benedict Arnold and other, and other characters from the Revolutionary, Revolutionary Period. It's interesting that um, in her research, uh, Ms. Akers became so fascinated with Arnold that she wrote a book about him uh, called Abducting Arnold, which I have not read. But she makes him out to be a somewhat sympathetic character. Uh, and he's dealt, he's dealt with in the next book that I'm going to talk about as well. Uh, but uh, it's interesting, though. She throws in an element of, of a romance. The, the Hale family is a merged family because there's the brothers and there's the sisters from the, from the wife's previous marriage. And Enoch, the older brother, falls in love with the oldest sister, and they marry, and causing a lot of tongues to wag in the uh, in the community. And then Nathan falls in love with the younger sister. The problem with this is, and this is kind of the fictional element, is that she is secretly his half sister. <laughs> so, so there's a reason that the parents are violently opposed to this, but Nathan and then the sister don't know this. And this is the result of a of a one night affair of the uh, father and the uh, current wife before when they were married, when they were married to other people, <laughs> which is, and Ms. Akers kind of half apologizes for that, realizing that, you know, some of Hale's, Hale's brother's descendants, I guess, because he never had children, would, might find it offensive. But, you know, of course, people are, people are flawed, and, and this kind of stuff is easy to happen. I mean, I, I know, people, people do make mistakes. And so it's, it's a great, it's a great book, and uh, I recommend checking it out. It's, it is definitely available on Amazon. And uh, worth worth the especially if you like a little romantic element in it. Now the the last one, which will be the most interesting, I think, is Burr, a 1973 historical novel by Gore Vidal from Random House. And this was part of a seven novel series called Narratives of Empire. And they were all based on the American history. And Aaron Burr, being an interesting character from the early days, seemed like a good candidate through which uh, America was shown. Another one based, is based on Lincoln, and then the others don't so much function, don't so much focus on a single person. But this is the only one I've read, so I can't comment on those others. I've read Bodal's books before, I like his style, and after seeing Hamilton, I, I resolved to read Burr, because I had heard of it, and I thought it would be interesting to see the same characters from a different viewpoint. And indeed, most of the characters from Hamilton, the play, are in the book Burr. Now, Ham Burr, excuse me, Burr is portrayed as a rather fascinating rascal, a likable scoundrel. And uh, the Wikipedia article says he's an anti-hero. I don't necessarily think so. I think he's a hero. I mean, if Hamilton had won the duel, he would have been considered the anti-hero. And in school, I learned that Burr was hated after this, and he did have a lot of death threats, but he had a lot of people that hated Hamilton and lauded him as a hero. In fact, in one line, Andrew Jackson says, tells Burr that he did the country a favor by killing that so-and-so Alexander Hamilton. <laughs> uh, and so, because he had so much controversy associated with his name, he did go to Europe for a while, but he did come back later on and resumed work as a lawyer. And this is where the actual book happens in the 1833 through 35 when Burr is working at a law firm. And the, the, the narrator is a law clerk named Charlie Schuyler, no relationship to Hamilton's wife. But Schuyler is fictional and he does a lot of the, he does a lot of the um, interpretation of Burr's life. He, also wants to be a journalist, so he's writing for various newspapers, and that's part of his part of his reason that he wants to write a biography of the fascinating character Burr, so they become good friends. And a lot of the story is basically Burr's memoirs, as told to Charlie Schuyler. So some sometimes it's first person from Charlie, sometimes it's first person from Aaron Burr. I love this book for its wonderful characterizations and its kind of dark humor. They kind of portray 
American history with warts and all, but not as not as evil because it's it's just human. It's just human, and and they've got some great historical and fictional characters. Besides people like Washington and Jefferson, uh, there's uh, Andrew Jackson, Davy Crockett, Henry Clay, James and Dolly Madison, Lafayette, the writer Washington Irving. I, I thought it was great to see him in here. The viewpoints of Han of uh, Burr, for example, he's he's rather doesn't like a lot of the founding fathers. Washington he sees as a dullard and an incompetent general who basically gets by from luck and help from the French. Jefferson he sees as a, a socially inept, brilliant but socially inept hypocrite. Uh, for things, among other things, being uh, concerned with the rights of man, yet still continuing to own slaves. And uh, Hamilton as an egomaniac, power seeker, almost kind of unbalanced. Uh, but they were good friends for quite a while. And both, yes, both womanizers. And yes, it mentions the uh, Reynolds affair, as is mentioned in, in the play Hamilton. That was the one that Hamilton got caught for. There were many, many other affairs. He was a serial adulterer, as they would say. <laughs> uh, and uh, Burr, Burr's wife died early on, which kind of saved him from that. So he was just a, you know, he was just a serial womanizer as a widowed man. Did marry briefly later in the book. I'm not sure if that was that was historical. I'm not sure. But it brings obscure history to life, and I, and I love that. And there was a lot that was relevant to the present. For example, there was a yellow fever epidemic in Washington. Periodically it would break out because of the mosquitoes. It was kind of a swamp at the time. And you know this was an epidemic that actually killed healthy young people. And so the cities would just clear out. People would clear, clear out uh, voluntarily. I uh, killed strong young people without, you know, complicating conditions. Of course, the duel with Hamilton in 1804 is a serious focus of this book. The idea that Hamilton threw away his shot out of some kind of principle is uh, dismissed in, in this book. It, in fact, it's just a theory, and it's not. It will probably never be known what exactly happened, but. Um, Burr maintains that Hamilton fired first and he missed because his hand shook, not because he was trying to be noble. And uh, the musical says that Burr challenged, uh, challenged Hamilton because of Hamilton's endorsement of Jefferson, even though Hamilton hated Jefferson. He just saw it as a personal animus. Uh, the book, uh, well, actual history says it has more to do with libels involving the governor's race for New York which Burr lost partly because of uh, partly because of Hamilton's uh, opposition, but in the book there's this really unsavory element added, which made the book controversial, is that in that Hamilton accuses accuses um, Burr of improper relations with his beloved daughter. He was really really close to his daughter. Burr was involved in a lot of interesting things at the time. Tammany Hall, which was a started out as a fraternal organization of kind of the elite in New York City, became a political machine, ran the city for many decades, became very corrupt. He was also a big uh, backer of the German colonization of Texas at that time, part of part of Mexico. But it did, although his schemes didn't succeed, others did, and, and there are a lot of German Americans in Texas right and to the present day. Uh, it's very, it's it's very very interesting though. There's so much history in here, uh, so much to, so much to see and to um, learn, if you don't know a lot about the periods of the Revolutionary War and the early few decades of the 19th century. What I enjoyed most was the similarities between the 1830s and the 2020s. Uh, first of all, there were race-related riots. And uh, there were serious, serious divisions of the populace, which really hated each other. Overblown accusations of treason and disloyalty, extreme hyperbole, unfounded accusations and allegations on both sides. Um, there were people being canceled, like the character William Leggett. I don't know if he was real or not. In the book, he's a editor at the Evening Post, forced to resign because of his abolitionist views, because anti-abolitionists put pressure on the paper. 
There's a great demonization of opponents and, and censorship, including the Sedition Act from John Adams and Andrew Jackson's ban on anti-slavery literature through the mail. That sounds familiar too. It's, it's not like they didn't exactly ban abolitionist literature, they just tried to suppress it. Because, why, you may ask? Because it was causing discord and, and causing riots and might lead to a civil war. That sounds awfully familiar. And I, I felt that Burr reminded me a lot of Donald Trump. Even though Burr you know, wasn't a billionaire, he was wealthy from time to time, and he was involved in a lot of real estate schemes, and he did have a lot, you know, he was accused of treason, and he actually tried. Um, and uh, people said a lot of nasty, awful things about him that weren't true. And, of course, he was involved in, in a few in savory things as well, but a lot of people really loved him, despite the fact that the elites hated him. <laughs> so, it, it, I don't know if, uh, if Vidal, if he was alive today, if he would, uh, if he would uh, be upset at this characterization, uh, this comparison of Burr to uh, Donald Trump or not. I don't know. But that's my show on the... Tales of the Revolution, and these three wonderful books that I have reviewed. I recommend them all. I would probably rank, rank them from from four gears to four and a half, at the very least. Even though the Burr book is rather long, that's its only, only bad point. Again, the books are Jai Tremaine by Esther Forbes, a wonderful YA about the uh, revolutionary Boston. Uh, Hailstorm by Becky Akers about the life of Nathan Hale and his execution for spying by the British. And finally, Burr by Gore Vidal, which deals with the long and colorful life of Aaron Burr, the killer of Alexander Hamilton. I'd like to thank you for sticking with me. Please comment below what you thought of this show and whether there's other works related to the revolution that you'd like me to read and or review. Thank you again, and please like and subscribe to help us get out the good words. I, I do have a link to my Amazon page somewhere on the page. <laughs> it's, hard, it's hard to find. I'm going to try to fix this. But that would also help support me if you would buy some of my books, and my, my steampunk-related books. So thank you again for now. This is Steampunk Desperado saying adios amigos from the Steampunk Desperado channel, where the past meets the future and the present is extraordinary.